Hello everyone, Mr. Chantry, your Neighborhood Planetarium Director here, with a fun citizen science project. Citizen science is when the general public makes observations about the world around them, and reports it to scientists to be used as data in the scientists' research, or where the general public helps to sort through or analyze collections of data that are too large for only a few scientists to analyze alone. This is something that people of all ages can participate in, and meaningfully contribute to a global science project. Globeatnight.org is an international citizen science project to study the impact of light pollution. Light pollution is excessive, misdirected, or obtrusive light. There is some natural light pollution, the sun and moon for instance, but this term typically means artificial or human-made light like the lights in parking lots, or on houses, or billboards, or street lights, and the list goes on and on. In addition to blocking out beautiful stars in the night sky from our view, scientists have found that light pollution can disrupt ecosystems, interfere with the migration of animals, have negative health effects on humans, limit our research of the universe, and waste energy and money. To understand these effects better, scientists need the public's help to gather more measurements or data. That's where GlobeAtNight.org and you come in. Each month, Globe at Night has two constellations that are positioned high in the sky to observe and report on. This month, May 2020, those constellations are Leo the Lion and Bootes the Herdsman. I'm going to show you how to find these constellations and how to fill out your report. But first, let's talk about how and when to make your observations. Since this study wants to measure human-made light pollution, we have to make sure we make our observation when there is no natural light pollution from the sun or moon. To avoid light from the sun, we'll have to wait until after twilight. Twilight is an astronomical term that refers to the soft glowing light from the sky when the sun has already set, which means that it's below the horizon. In order to avoid any of the sun's natural light pollution, you will need to wait about an hour and a half after sunset. For this month, the earliest you can make your observations is at about 9.30 p.m. to avoid the sun. To avoid the other natural light polluter, the moon, you have to make your observations when the moon is not in the sky. Assuming you will make your observations between 9.30 p.m. and midnight, you would want to wait until the moon is between its third quarter and new phases. This month, that will occur between the 14th until the 23rd. Now that we've ensured that any light pollution we see is human-made, this is what we call a control in an experiment, we can make our observations. You will be using your eyes as the scientific instruments to make measurements for this experiment, and we have to make sure that they are calibrated we're ready to make the best possible measurement. So you will need to get them adjusted to the dark. In astronomy, we call this dark adaptation. As you sit in the dark, the central part of your eye, the pupil, relaxes and opens wider to let in more light. It takes about 15 to 30 minutes for your pupil to fully relax, so you'll want to plan to be out in the dark for at least that long before you make your observation. It is important to note that although it takes at least 15 to 30 minutes for your pupil to relax, it only takes a fraction of a second for it to close back up when exposed to bright light. So you will need to avoid looking into car headlights, street lights, house lights, and especially a phone or iPad screen. Yes, this means you will have to not check your phone for at least 15 minutes. We have controlled to avoid natural light pollution from the sun and the moon. We have calibrated our instruments. We can now actually observe the sky. You'll be looking for two constellations, Leo the Lion and Bootes the Herdsman in the sky, and looking at how many stars you can see in each constellation. You've probably noticed some stars are bright and some are dim. In astronomy, we call this their magnitude. Dimmer stars have a higher magnitude, and brighter stars have a lower magnitude. I know, this seems kind of backwards to me, too. The brightest star you can see in the sky right now is Arcturus, and it's a magnitude zero. 
In a perfectly dark sky with no light pollution, the human eye can see stars as dim as maybe a magnitude 7, depending on how good your eyes are. As you get more light pollution, those dimmest or highest magnitude stars begin to disappear. You will not need to measure the exact magnitudes of stars. Just see how many stars you can see in each constellation. After you make your observation, you will be asked in the report to match what you observed to a star map picture on the website. You can use the seven bright stars in the familiar shape of the Big Dipper to locate both Leo and Bootes. When you go outside, look straight up to the zenith, or the highest point in the sky, and you should see the Big Dipper in this part of the sky. To find Leo the Lion, we will use the cup part of the Big Dipper. Imagine this cup is filled with water, but there are holes in the bottom of it. It would drip down on the back of Leo the Lion, making it a big dripper. Leo's most noticeable pattern of stars are the ones that form a backwards question mark. This is the main and front paws of the lion. Once you find the basic shape of Leo, including the triangle that makes up his back, legs, and tail. Observe closely how many dim stars you can see around some of the brighter stars. The brightest star in Leo, named Regulus, is a good place to look for dim stars. As light pollution goes down, you can see more and more dim stars around this very bright star. The second constellation is Bootes the Herdsman. This constellation has the shape of a kite or ice cream cone, with the bright star Arcturus at its bottom. To locate Bootes, we're going to go back up to the zenith and find the Big Dipper again. Instead of using the cup of the dipper, we're going to use the curved line that makes the handle. In math, we call curved lines arcs, and I only mention this because we have a saying that helps us remember how to find Bootes. We arc to Arcturus. Use the arc of the handle and follow it along until you see a really bright star. This is Arcturus. Now, look up and to the left, or east, for the kite or ice cream cone shape. Once you've found the basic shape of the constellation, look around the brightest stars and take a mental note of the dimmer ones that you see. This will be helpful when you go inside and make your report on the Globe at Night site. A few other things to note when you're out making your observations. Are there any clouds in the sky? How much of the sky is covered in clouds? Is it really windy or cold or hot? Can you see any light domes? These are bright areas from really bright locations in the distance. Most places in the Methacton area will have a light dome in the southeast, which is where you can see the city of Philadelphia's light pollution. Now that all of the hard work is done, before you go inside, take a minute to really enjoy the sky and imagine what you might see in the sky if there was no light pollution. Now, go inside and go to www.globeatnight.org. At the top of the page, click where it says Report. Most of the time, it will have the date and time and location filled in for you. If not, fill it in. In astronomy, we use 24-hour time, which is like military time, so we keep counting after 12 noon. Instead of saying 1 o'clock in the afternoon, we say 13. 2.30 in the afternoon will be 14.30 and so on. Sunset this month is around 2010, so your observations will most likely be, be between 21.30 and 2400. Then, click on each of the eight small images to see which one best matches your observations. Try to remember those really faint stars around the bright ones to see what matches up. Then you can report on the clouds and other sky conditions. Sky quality meters 
are devices that astronomers use to make measurements of the light from the sky with an electronic device. There is a spot to enter those measurements, but you will not need to unless you own a sky quality meter, which most people do not. Finally, click the submit data and give yourself a pat on the back because you just scienced. You have contributed to work that will inform future light and energy usage at night. If you go back to the main page of Globe at Night and scroll all the way to the bottom, there is a map that marks all of the observations that are reported. It's fun to watch when your observation appears and if there are others around you making observations. I would love to look at this map and see our area light up with observations. Well, I hope you participate in this cool citizen science project. And always, remember to go outside, look up at the sky, and be excellent to each other.